the first ghost hunt we had here. The guy had a mullet like that you could not believe. And it was like he had this mullet and he would go around the end and he'd be like, oh, I got one on my back. I got a ghost on my back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And he would walk down the whole stairs like that with a ghost on his back. Welcome to Holly Hill in historic Midway, Kentucky. I'm Weta Michael, and this is Up Home. The food of Central Kentucky reflects who we are as a community. It's the intersection of people, places, and ingredients. And when we find our place in that community, we become part of the greater story, honoring our past and celebrating our future. The Holly Hill Inn is our love letter to restaurants and all the people who make them what they are. The farmers who grow the food, the cooks and chefs who prepare it, the staff who serve it, and all the people who sit down together to eat. There's something very special about communities with a rich local food culture, and we are grateful to have found one here. Why did we have this burning desire to open a restaurant? We did. We well, had because we love restaurants. We do love restaurants. But also, I think I wanted to build a restaurant that did things that I liked that no other restaurant around here was doing. Yeah. Like three course prefix. Yeah. Interesting wine list. Interesting and affordable wine list. Right. Butter knives. <laughs> <laughs> With a little luck and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, we renovated the Holly Hill Inn in Midway, Kentucky. When we bought the inn from Ike Rouse and his kids, we had no idea that the Rouse family would become so important in our lives. Ike's daughter, Amy Perry, is a dear friend and neighbor and a living link to the history of Holly Hill Inn. So this area up here, 10 acres, where Holly Hill is, uh, also includes a house that my parents built in 1956. Well, so when you were growing up, who lived in this house? So when I was growing up, uh, my aunt Nat, or Catherine, lived here with her mother, Desdemona. We called her Mama Des, and she actually died in this room. This was Desdemona's bedroom. This was her bedroom only because her daughters made her move downstairs because it would be closer to bathroom and kitchen. Okay. And she was not happy about that. Did we have a mission when we started out for these restaurants? <laughs> <laughs> like, we did have a local food mission, didn't we? Yeah, that's part of the reason we started. Well, even when we before we started Holly and Lynn, we had the local food mission. That was part of the reason we wanted to open a restaurant, right? To, yeah. To do more with local farmers than anyone was doing around here. David Wagner and I have been friends since the early days at Holly Hill. I met David when we started buying produce from his community-supported agriculture operation in Nicholas County. When you started, I think, I'm right in saying that the, the CSA from Three Springs was the first one in the area. Well, it had been, it had been tried a little bit, uh, but there was no active CSA program in central Kentucky at that moment that we know of, and, uh, and very few in, in the state of Kentucky. And that meant that, like, what, what, what a family could do was pay you, I think it was $400 for the entire growing season. Right. And for a weekly pickup. Right. Of whatever Half was a bushel of produce and yeah, whatever's coming on in the garden uh, in season. Like Holly Hill was sort of the unofficial restaurant member of right. your CSA. So we were like the clean sweep. We would come in and uh, clean sweep whatever uh, the other members didn't take that week. Yeah, well, I began to plan a little extra. At first, it was just sort of hoping we'd have enough extra to cover the shareholders and then hopefully have some left over for Holly Hill. Since buying our first produce from David 20 years ago, his role in our business has expanded dramatically. In addition to growing and sourcing local produce for all our restaurants, David has begun production on site. For some time, we, we've talked about the possibility of me being on the ground here at the Holly yeah. Hill Inn, uh, growing things and, uh, and planning and even drawing uh, a site plan for the entire garden and think in terms of not just growing vegetables, but Kentucky native plants around the perimeter. Neighbors, 
David's influence on the grounds at Holly Hill has been transformative. Now we can step out of the kitchen and pick fresh vegetables, herbs, and flowers from one of the many gardens he has created. Snap peas, which I love the shelling peas, but um, the snap peas. Are they two the different thing. varieties? I always thought it was. Yeah, um, and I've actually been bringing some some of these snap peas to the chefs, and they're wanting the shell out peas, and so they're just popping open the snap pea pods and getting the peas. Oh, did you tell inside. them they're not supposed to do that? What? No. <laughs> you got to educate those guys. Uh, I don't do a t whole lot of telling of the chefs how to do things in the kitchen. <laughs> So we've had several ghost. Well, we had a medium. That was was that our most successful? Do you think when she came? I think so. This was Catherine from Lexington, and she said that she had done the wine guild, but she wasn't drunk or anything. <laughs> and she was um, standing at the end of the bottom of the steps with her hand on the newel post, uh -huh. and she looked up the steps, and she's like, "There was this woman, a figure, walking towards me down the stairs." Yeah. And she said the. The figure says to her, or telepaths to her, I'm not happy because they made me move downstairs. So let's go back. So I, originally, the person we're talking about, Mama Des, her husband was Isaac Parrish. Yes. And they moved here in... 1900. 1900. Mm -hmm. It would be impossible to tell the story of Holly Hill without remembering Amy's dad, Ike Rouse. The grandson of Isaac and Mama Des Parish, Ike had a vision that went beyond his family. He wanted to share Holly Hill with his community, and he was instrumental in turning the home place into the restaurant it is today. I have a question for you. Yes. Are you happy you moved to Midway, Kentucky? Oh, yes, I am. I mean, would you do all this over again? Yes. Are you lying? No, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's 20 years already we've owned this restaurant. Yes, and we've been in Kentucky almost 30. 30, yeah, almost 30 mm -hmm. years. Now, 30 years ago, would you think we would be sitting here? 30 years ago, I mean, I have to say that I think we succeeded way more than I ever imagined possible. Even though when you're in the middle of it, mm -hmm. when you're working it every day, you don't really feel successful <laughs> <laughs> like today. <laughs> Like today, you know, the you water know. main is, you know, outside is a geyser in the front yard. This chandelier is shorted out. There's no internet. <laughs> There's no internet at Wallace Station. Our dog has a fungal infection. Our dog has a fungal <laughs> infection. Smithtown's fryers have exploded, and so they have to be replaced. You grow up here next to your great-grandmother and your great-aunt, mm -hmm. and with your grandmother down the street. Right. It's, it's pretty fabulous. amazing. Yeah. It was fabulous. And it this really was called was. Cougar Hill? Cougar Town Hill. Uh, they always called it Up Home yeah. uh, or The Hill, which is so funny because- We I call mean, it The Hill. Are, yeah, yeah. Well, we call it Up Home sometimes on menus. It's such a fabulous history. One of the things, you know, that I've, the people have asked me over the years is like, why did you come back to Kentucky? Cause you know, I married a New York boy and I got my training in New York and one of my answers was that I didn't want to cook for strangers. I wanted to be part of a community. And part of the reason your mom and your grandmother and your dad all wanted to open this into, a, open their, their family home into a bed and breakfast was to create a place for that community to yes. gather. After Chris and I graduated from the Culinary Institute in New York, Chris proposed, we came home to Kentucky to plan our wedding, and we never left. Since then, we've opened eight restaurants. Holly Hill Inn was our first, our big jump into the food world we love so much. Up here on the hill, we're just another chapter in a rich history of family and community. Mm -hmm.